Yeah, so I'm thinking about the elections, right? And um, wait, I still don't understand why are you traveling that long distance. For the love of God, you're in flight, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because That's if it's bus, flight. I can't. Even, if it's bus, I'll stay back. <laughs> <laughs> can't do twelve hours on the road. Oh, but two fruits. Hope it's not too expensive. Um, I think about eighty k or so. Damn. You love your country. But the lo- people are actually traveling into the country. You love your country. So vote. And I'm seeing tweets of people at the airport just arriving. About I don't know why they are telling, why they are telling us. So, so there, there's, there's a there. lot at stake here, right? Let's even take our tech space, for instance. And how, well, yeah, it looks like, oh, we've raised this amount of money. We've become blah, blah, blah. But you've only scratched the surface of the possibility. And Tech. also the um, conduciveness, conducive environment, the space for. Good. I remember writing something about which country was that in um, Congo. Mm. Sometimes I think in 2020, and the founder just had to mention the fact that the level of bureaucracy in that country is, is terrible, and it can kill your startup. Eventually, the startup died. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I see we actually predicted it or something. Mm. But yeah, so we don't want to get to that point. But we can still get better. So mm. the state of the country is very, very important when it comes to how tech businesses are run. Yeah, so uh, I just want to wish everybody a safe journey wherever they're going to. Some people are going long distances. Some people are going to be going through really, really shaky. I mean, you shouldn't have to be that way. You should be able to vote anywhere you are in Nigeria, but or in the world, in the world, right? But yeah, there are stories we've written about e voting, possibilities, possibilities. There are possibilities, but of course, there are always issues. And uh, for those of you who have a stake in the tech space, this administration, the outgoing administration, has already given us a parting gift, the Startup Act, and they brought one that is not just for startup recently, the Transform- Transformation Act or something like that, for businesses in general to provide conducive environment. So now that that act is going to, uh, now that the act has gone live, it's important that you are aware of those acts, the laws and what they can do for you. And the decisions on who you should vote for, try to vote for who you feel will be the most, you you feel comfortable will implement. Please vote for someone that will vote. Sometimes people's feelings as uh, subjective, <laughs> vote for someone, and you know, uh, vote for someone that will actually do what they say they will do. Please, yeah, yeah. Because so, we have a lot of awesome laws. Put, I don't want to leave Nigeria, you don't want to leave Nigeria. That's good for you. Now, we started it on a very, very somber note, so let's get bright. Let's get bright, everybody. Smile, smile, mm-hmm. smile. So, smile. Yeah, we need, we have reasons to be smiling. Today is Oluwani Femi's birthday. Happy birthday! Yes. You can see her with the birthday attire, <laughs> birthday outfit, birthday clothes. <laughs> yeah, to make birthday it hair too. like that. Uh, yeah, and the birthday hair. Yeah, please notice the hair. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so should we sing for you? So vanity. You want to. Can you imagine? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. guys join in now. Join in. Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. I'm so emotional. Uh. <laughs> it should be this. Oh, man. Oh, man. Nobody sang for me on my birthday last you week, have, Monday. Schedule your birthday to fall on the podcast. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> we. Thanks for you online. Mm. Okay, that's so. Ha- many, many happy birthdays. Where are we shutting down? Everybody should stay in the house and pray for Nigeria. Wow. Go out if you have free wish and vote. Shutting down her bullying unit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> please don't let, don't let the SS hear you. <laughs> I beg. I don't, don't, shut that, don't shut down any bullying unit, I beg. Yeah, so uh, there are a lot of bad actors in the Nigeria election space, but of course, the bad actors, the strange actors, and the weird actors, they're everywhere. Even this our startup space. Last year, it was Buzz goes back to back. From Bento to Rice Vest to Health Lane. Just Buzz goes one after the other. Now, 
we've already started the year with something else. Yes. We're hearing that Dash's founder and CEO has been suspended. What happened? So um, Dash is a fintech startup in Ghana, or based in Ghana, and the, the the founder and CEO has been suspended, allegedly suspended for, um, he, or he has been placed on administrative leave, pending the outcomes of an investigation. That's that's the official statement from the startup, but the uh, the the other part of the I mean, the unofficial statement is that. Is is being accused of financial misreporting. So basically, financial misreporting is, you know, how when you're praying, they say sense of omission and sense of commission. <laughs> <laughs> so either something you intentionally left out or something you intentionally misreported. So you made an error or you didn't add something or you lied about something, basically. So that's what is being accused of. And um, I mean, that happened over the weekend, I think Friday, and a lot of founders were talking about it. So the idea was they raised a seed round last year, 32, I think 32.8 million, which was huge for the any two. startup. Yes. That's huge for any startup. And it is a seed round. So it's huge for any startup, not to talk of a fintech startup based in Ghana. And at the time, a lot of People ha- did not know Dash at the time. So the, I mean, some people raised eyebrows like, who are these guys and how are they able to raise this much money? So now it's coming out that they initially wanted to raise $8 million, but they, they did that and exceeded it. So they had some really crazy growth. So going from 250, from processing about $250 million to a billion dollars in transactions, and their custom, the number of customers they were supposedly serving just grew a whole lot. So they went from, um, basically went from zero to 100 in a very short period of time. So that, on the back of that, it enabled them raise that much money, which was um, significantly higher than they had initially wanted to raise. So it's now looking like they misrepresented numbers mm. in defend, the process. They the investor Zobo. Exactly. So, Code Zobo. Yeah. And some questions were being asked that um, how much due diligence did these investors do before before <laughs> investing the money. for them to fall victim? But then even the almighty JP Morgan um, was a victim of such. I think it was this year, right? Yeah, this year. Yeah. So everybody they collect. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like this will make you could make anyone start questioning the validity of those claims by fintech companies when they say they are processing these huge transaction volumes, right? Yeah. Probably, yes, hearing this now, when another company says they're produce, um, processing 3 million transactions every month, mm. you'll be like, Skeptical. some ones have come again. But one way to know, there are some companies that you actually see that these guys, they're actually doing what they say they're doing, right? Mm-hmm. Because there are some fintech companies where if you go to any shop, if you go to any, you are seeing people using their So, you know, the problem with them is the period, the, the time. Yeah. The time frame was too small. I think within a year, they were able to go from about 250, processing 250 million to, or less than a year, mm. to a what, billion what if they had dollars. A crazy market entry strategy like OP. Well, that would, all, you knew OP, right? A lot, I mean, everybody, regardless of what part of Nigeria you are in, you mm. saw... Which is like a sign okay. of... When OP says they yeah. process this amount... This amount, I you know. can now say, oh, okay, I've been seeing people around a lot. So there's a, a very good What chance. about Money Point? Did you, wait, did you know them before? So that's the a, that's a thing. I knew Money Point. I didn't know that it was a team-up product. Okay, you knew Money Point. Yes, because you know I would go to... Um, I, I would go to a POS agent and I would see that they are using Money Point. But, I mean, I never really did any research to be like who are these guys and all, but I knew the brand money point. Mm. Um, it's similar to how I recently started seeing Pampi POS, but I've also noticed that I haven't seen it enough. So if they come and tell me that, oh, you processed $10 billion last year, I'm going to think about it because I did, I'm not seeing a lot of them around. So I, I it's, it's, it's basically the same thing. You're, you have really impressive numbers, but, the man on the street 
doesn't know. I think we were having a conversation. Um, I was having a conversation in Bolu last week about something like this. If you say you're doing this and the your users can't see you, or the people in the market that you supposedly serve can't see you, then I don't know what kind of business you're running, Sham, but it's suspicious. That's that's a fair point. So, okay, I'm not going to drag that further. We have an article about it now. I'm also working on it follow-up story to see what really really went on behind the scenes at dash but uh, moving on from that let's dash was a Ghanaian fintech startup right mm. so we now have the phone uk giant telecom company yeah. selling off his stake completely they've completed the sale of your stake in vodacom vodafone ghana mm. to a new telco telecell group now what's interesting about this is telecell group as just been witnessing like a resurgence since 2017. Mm. They're not really that. So they're very, very old teleco that, we, that was founded years ago, but now they're coming back with full force. And the thing with telecos now in Nigeria, why am I, why do I keep saying telecos? Telcos, <laughs> tell <you> say, <laughs> I understand it's the brain. Okay, so the thing with telcos, right? They are facing a huge pressure. The voice and data business is very, very huge. But one thing I can see in MTN and Airtel, which are like the, one of the biggest in Africa. One thing I can see with both of them is voice is shrinking and data is increasing. So once voice shrinks to a certain level, mm. what becomes of the telcos? So that there's now talk of diversification. Of mm. so that's the way we talk about media. We can't keep depending on ad revenue, even mm-hmm. though ad revenue is still the main cash cow. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Google, Facebook. So, but Telcel Group has an interesting playbook. They've went, they've gone to several African countries already. But apart from the mobile operator side, they're also offering um, e-commerce services. Oh. And e-commerce services is like a community kind of e-commerce where you buy goods and services from people in your locality. So it's hyper-local yeah. e-commerce. So mm-hmm. once you have the app, and the app functions like a super app, you can use it to do other stuff too, and make payments and blah, 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 blah. Then apart from that, they also have cybersecurity services, all those uh, cloud protection, firewall, and blah, blah, blah. B2B service. Then they also have a, an initiative that supports startups oh, or the African no Startup Telecommunication Company. And not just a telecom company again. Mm. So it's a quite, quite, quite an interesting play. Which I mean, it makes it makes a lot of sense. Look at Safaricom. Yeah, Empresa is not it is not a telco. Like it's not a telecommunication service. Yeah, but it's providing like majority a very of huge portion of the revenue. Yeah, so it just makes sense that you may now start thinking, how can I expand on this? But, but you know, the, the telecommunication companies in emerging markets, mm. like they are still trying to boost their broadband penetration, mm. they might fall into the. Um, the deception that voice that the revenue from voice we actually get to a very low point to the extent that it's not be able to contribute to their revenue and especially the fact that they are trying to promote broadband penetration can't they move forward from that to fiber and just focus on data so if data becomes the cash cow which it will eventually become Mm -hmm. Something needs to be the second fiddle. So when voice was a cash cow, data was the second fiddle. Hmm. So if voice now shrinks, and it's data. going to be the second fiddle for some time, but it's going to drop to a certain extent because let's think about it. If WhatsApp calls and internet calls basically become really, really good, like you cannot distinguish it from a normal voice call, would you still bother using voice? No. I mean, right now, a lot of people are not... I, yes, I was yes. I was arguing with my friend Michael which day. Like, why are you calling me with WhatsApp? Do I? Why are you calling me with WhatsApp? It's actually yeah. so. I don't know why that. Why you were surprised? I'm not, I'm I'm angry. <laughs> why are you calling me with WhatsApp? Here's the thing. Yeah. So I have a friend that we typically do very long calls. And if it's long call, yeah, I understand because of that but, uh, we don't use um, normal call because Even it's for, ridiculously expensive. I mean, you probably spend about a thousand naira for those calls. So, I have data almost always. So why not just use it? And see, it's so serious that my dad now calls me on WhatsApp. Interesting. Same thing here, and I always miss his calls because I, I put my WhatsApp on silent. Exactly. Like, I don't want to hear anything. And when I see what I do sometimes, I oh, uh, just come online. I'll call you on WhatsApp because I probably don't have 
enough. There was a time when I used to buy airtime mm. frequently, but sometimes I'm like, okay, a lot of people I'm calling on WhatsApp, so why not just use WhatsApp? So you can but, see if voice gets to that level. But it is still. People. It is still. But okay, but now the the market is more fragmented, fragmented rather because fiber will also be com- um, competing with them. Yeah. Um, Yes, fi- fiber pro- uh, providers. Yeah. So it's not just be, you know, it's only these telcos that provide voice. Yes. But now, oh, I, 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 I can so see y- now. You get it, you get it. I didn't even think <laughs> about that uh, fiber competition and satellites, internet. Yes, and yes. That. So, so their market imagine, is now smaller. You don't even need to have a SIM card. Okay, you might need a SIM card, but the SIM card is just there. You're not doing anything. Hmm. Your internet connection is Wi-Fi. You have a small device in your hand that you can carry along. Maybe not a telco, maybe mm-hmm. an ISP like Spectranet or Swift. Yes. And at home you have a Starlink or you have a Fiber One. And that's it. So they have to start thinking about And if there's anything that's I would true. actually say about telcos, they are one of the most forward thinking companies. And you like can look in yeah. it. No, MT, MT yeah, MTN Street. MTN Street recent um, rebranding. Mm-hmm. They rebranded because they actually want to bring new things in. So hopefully, maybe yeah. they can take a leave from Telcel. Yeah. Then you Telcel. lose, you lose. And their, their own is more, is more severe. You so, do anyhow, you see anyhow. Shop, no, shop. But the, the crazy thing is, I look at Telcos and like, they are core to everything we do. Yes, so they the can just space. tap into anything and they have the market already. Yeah. Co- so I'm even wondering, why are they so scared right now? I mean, they are very, very like people can't currently in Nigeria. Like they are supposed. They are not scared mo- of new entrants. Mo- mo- mobile money should like be the trending thing in Nigeria should by it? this time. No, let's not. Let's not go there. <laughs> let's <laughs> don't don't please. Okay, but, next. <laughs> but fine, 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 fine. Telcos are trying to diversify and they're moving forward to other things. But again, I'm always so 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 amazed with the way these guys think forward. Like when they brought four G to Nigeria, three G penetration was still very very low mm. many people it's not that people are even having 3g phones crazy enough mm. it's not that 3g phones has got into a high level of penetration but they brought 4g years ago so i <laughs> i guess the thing is they have very high barrier to entry i cannot stand up to the young and i mean i mm. probably need to raise about almost 100 million dollars for me to do any serious thing in the telecommunication True. space but a startup what it be if I learn how to code six months? <laughs> I've launched a startup. So if they that also means that anybody who is sufficiently motivated and sufficiently connected can wipe you off the face of the earth by just getting the right people. So mm. it's either they are staying ahead of the innovation and just staying ahead of trends, or they wait and we know a certain company in Nigeria that has waited until other people have come upon them. And now they are, I think they are now number three in the market here. They are three major players. So it's just, I mean, it's either you move very fast. Uh, you get, or you get I know who does this, but I won't mention your name because I need to, I need to get interview. <laughs> 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 I need to get interview audience, I beg. <laughs> so quick mention though, uh, interesting, we moved from Ghana to Angola, a South African company, a South African country rather. Mm-hmm. Angola is building a national cloud project. 89 million dollars worth of a cloud project and what funded I find by i mean they found on <laughs> no <laughs> now it has to be an international <laughs> no a global company or so something what they are building what they are building really, i think it's government yeah. funding because what they are building it's nine million is small as a million. 89 million is small money. so what they are building i don't think there's any incentive for any international body to fund it they want to build to data centers, massive data centers, mm-hmm. to centralize all government activities and provide, uh, okay, for those who are not familiar, data centers are like these huge, huge, huge computer warehouses that allows you to have very, 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 very good internet connect- uh, connections in your country. So normally, when you are browsing the internet, the signal goes from Nigeria to whatever country that has that website. But with data centers, you can have things locally then it also goes a step further to help companies that are dependent on technology to store and use data. So fintech companies, for instance, data centers will be very, very important to them to process transactions. Mm-hmm. So it could be the difference between failed and successful transactions. transactions. So now that we get, we got that cleared up, they're building data centers, two data centers. So said this min- different ministries in Angola have different silos. So they want to centralize everything in one place with two data centers. Then they now want to build a national fiber network 
So a few days ago, they unlocked the, they unveiled the fiber in Kabinda province. So it now, so like if uh, you were familiar with the tech space in 2020, you remember I wrote about Lagos building a unified fiber project. Sorry, my time, time I said for myself is up, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Lagos is building a unified fiber project. Two years on, we are still waiting for them to finish it. But that's beside the point. So it's something similar where they dig fiber around the country where they only dig once, then every other operator can tap into that fiber mm-hmm. to offer services to people. So Angola is doing that nationwide. And they're connecting those fibers to those data centers. So cool. apart from that, they now want to open it up to all the ministries, government ministries, and open up and yeah, dot AO. So in Nigeria we have dot NG. So you know it's a Nigerian domain. So mm-hmm. that is regulated by a Nigerian body. I think Nira is Nira. Yeah. Then the body that regulates it in Angola wants to open it up so that yeah, they would offer licenses to companies that they can be offering this domain name the companies then they also launched a satellite last year to <laughs> do is air observation services <laughs> so but everything is making me think about data sovereignty a lot of people that are building data centers in nigeria in africa are not africans yeah the, the see i asked that funded by because it's not something that african countries actually think but about. guess what nigeria already has like two government funded data centers top secret data centers that no one knows about Really? Yes, in Lagos we have one data center in Lagos supposed to be controlling all every tech initiative you are seeing in Lagos. So if you are living close to the capital city in Ikeja, you will see a lot of traffic lights. If you run a traffic light, it snaps your plate number and they send you a fine. What's controlling all of that? Mm. And they built a data center to house all those things so that everything can move very, very smoothly. Then recently, the federal government just launched the data center in Kano. It's data sovereignty. Why? When your data is moving to these other foreign countries, sensitive data could move along that you mm. don't want to be in the eyes and of may not be safe for the for the so country. If you want to digitize government activities, Thinking of course, we have to you no, see. calm down. <laughs> so let's say driver's license data. You want? Yeah, we talk about building a national central database. Eventually, you will need to put it in a data center somewhere, mm. store it somewhere. True. Is it who do you want to use? Of course, the obvious answer would have been one, but it just got acquired by a US data center company. We have Airtel. Airtel Africa is n- okay. Yeah, they have Nigerian owners, but at the end of the day, Airtel is still. Not then we have OADC, the guys that are building the data center for Google's Equiano cable. Again, OADC, okay, it's fine. But it's like a coalition of different different telcos and who owns those telcos? Foreigners. So you can see, I hope with these few points of mine, I've been able to convince you that more oh, governments in Africa should actually be building data centers if they want to digitize their yeah, activities. I see. Okay, so <laughs> I bought you enough with all this information. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what is good for us, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that's like an interesting one. I want to see how it plays out. I want to see how people react with, say, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, all building data centers in Africa. Most of them in South Africa, though. And I want to see how all these centers that the governments are building play out. And finally, Chipa has just laid off. Again? Again, yeah. Yep. It sounded like news I've said before. That's <laughs> why I said again. Yeah, I mean, it's some people are doing it twice now. What, twice? Yeah. What, what, that, what that thing they say? Is it? The third time is a charm or something. Are you kidding me for so, Leo? Yeah, expecting a third I, one now. And you really can't. You really can't. Maybe they overestimated the blowback from FTX or something. No, but yeah. they, 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 they didn't. They decided not to allude to that. Oh. That of course. this has anything to do with FTS. So, how many people were laid off? Okay, so um, this is another round of layoff. The first one was in December. That was that one was like um, two point five percent of the workforce. Two, 12.5. Yeah. Twelve point five. Yeah. Twelve point five. Yes, this particular one is um, a third. A third of the workforce. Third of the in workforce. Nigeria. Wait, another no, company. Not in Nigeria alone. A lo- oh, globally. Globally. Another globally. company just laid off a third of its workforce. Is that a pattern? Both. Mm. They laid off a third of their Nigerian workforce. Seventeen out of seventy. Yes, yeah. they did too. Okay. In Nigeria, um, theirs is theirs is like they want to intensify operation. I still don't get 
because people live for different Cheaper reasons. Cheaper or both? Both. Both. Yes. You want to intensify operation. Yes, kind of. We are laying off. So I'm trying to, I'm still trying to. But, I, but, but I saw a news a day before the layoff was announced that both, number one, wants to invest 500 million dollars. Sorry. Have you not seen that story before? In Africa. You know that someone raised a huge amount of money and then a few weeks later, not months, a few weeks later, we are now hearing that, oh, we are laying people off. I also saw that they are doing global recruitment. Yes, in yeah. fact, they are still for uh, open, openings they are still for openings Nigeria. In both Nigeria. Yes, f- but they are management rules. But this layoff affected um, junior and mid mid level rules. So I, I don't know the plan, right? But they want to make the operations better and. I don't know what they're looking for <laughs> because the, the people that were affected said the company has actually um, told them, assured them that there will be no layoffs, that all they just need to do is to restructure and move people across rules until they were called to a meeting and they were told that you guys had to leave. Well, well, it still boils down to how companies um, and do stuff like this. I don't even think layoffs will actually affect company's brand these days because it's kind of like the usual like thing. It's not even making... But it ever affecting anybody's brand? No, no, no. When, when it wasn't as popular, right? Companies are like very... I mean, when Elon started it, everybody careful. was bashing him. Yeah. The people that were bashing him were in the deck space. We are Nigerians. We've heard of a bank that did a round of recruitment for um, graduate trainees and a few months down the line, less than half a year later, some senior employees or some older staff found out that they were relieved. So it was basically, we hire people, tell you to teach them. And then a few months later, we now relieve you. And they did it across the country. Well, mm. it was, I mean, it's something that we see occasionally in Nigeria. So I wish more employees would talk about all these things, right? There are a lot of human on go. I I actually searched for. I actually went on LinkedIn to check um, people's stories about how they were laid off. Not no, just generally, Mm -hmm. and I used some keywords. It was very difficult to see people talk about it in Nigeria or in Mm -hmm. Africa. Uh, most, of, most of the, I'm sad to announce, I'm sad to announce they are like US, um, Singapore, UK, those kind of, those countries, no, those regions, not Africa. I don't know why we don't talk about It's this. very obvious, isn't it? There's a kind of stigma when, oh, you were fired. I, my friend was talking to me and was like, he interviewed with a company and he asked him, why did you leave your former job? He said I was fired. Yeah, I was shocked. No so, one. <laughs> if, I, if I'm fired, I don't care what you tell me. It's just I was not good enough. That's that's like so. Yeah, being fired and getting laid off usually. <laughs> so the, the same thing. <laughs> okay, like, I, I lost my like job. Like what move said? Like we dismissed. We yes. dismissed. I can't lose them out. <laughs> These kind of things. But yeah, that's let's just. Um, but. I, I wish more employees would talk. You can always reach out to me or Nifemi to talk about these issues. If you share your stories, we we, are, we will not mention or even draw attention to anything about you. But I think more people should share the stories about the activities in the workplace and save or avoid chicken in public and KFC <laughs> for, <laughs> for for some time. Okay, no, that was that. Hope I didn't offend KFC and chicken in public. Please believe that money. You probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, they'll cut it <laughs> Okay, but yeah. Yeah, all that things happened this week. Meta, after everybody bashed Elon again for charging for Twitter Blue to get so uh, verified, Meta yeah. also did his own. Paul, you can check out the story on Tech Point. Then Jumbai, Kenyan marketplace for yeah. construction, construction materials. I mean, I yeah. see construction shops everywhere. Why are these guys not raising money? Why are they not raising? These people have raised money, so it's not remaining. Shop, build your website and see if you can enter that place. So all I just need to do is build a website and say I'm connecting all the building material guys in Lagos. That and I will raise money. Hard. I mean, look. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is hard. Is it that you are even going to the market to get stock yourself for building materials. You are getting scammed. Now, if mm. you now want to use the market space, market like place. marketplace, mm. like Jumia for construction materials, you get some standard. Is it? Will, will you? You, are, are you kidding?
kidding me? No, so the... the like, the, there's a market for some standard construction of and course. building products. Well, here's the reason I'm asking whether you... you. So if I'm going to do that as a, as, as a startup, I think I'll probably pay attention to... Mm, that's where the hard control. work is. That's yeah. where the hard work is. So that means that, for example, me, myself, doing it, I need to have guys that know what... Because right now, if you take me to the market and you sell me fixed cement, bro, I'll buy it. <laughs> so if I start something like that... You have to do your due diligence. Ah, that, that's crazy. Anyway, you can find more stories about all the issues we discussed today at our new Fresh and Package newsletters. If you take today, you want to learn more about the cheaper cash debacle, or you want to learn more about Dash, you can always check FinTech Today handled by yours truly, Jingo Zerim. Then if you want to learn more stuff about the workplace, how people are handling layoffs, and some of all those things employ- employers put in your contract that you should be aware of, sign up to the Workaholic Newsletter by Oluwan Ifemi, our senior editor, the birthday girl. <laughs> okay, then, of course, the Daily Digest, Tech Point Digest, you want to just get a five-minute roundup of everything that's happening in the tech space in Africa, you can always subscribe to Tech Point Digest. And, of course, you heard it here first last week, the Lego Startup Expo. It's happening in it's May. It's happening in May at Landmark. Go and get your tickets. And if you're a startup out there... Go to Opiweka. Sorry? You should go to Opiweka. Opiweka. Oh, God. You don't understand that reference. Opiweka. Nigerian movie. Uh. Grab your copy now. No, it's a ah. Luke Pedro. Luke, do what I Lagos. I see. <laughs> Hey. Yeah, Opie Waker and Idumata. Okay, fine, fine. So, but no, you don't go to Idumata. <laughs> Opie Waker. Go to techpoint.africa slash events slash. Don't go to legosartofexpo.com, please. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, to subscribe. And uh, yeah, did, did I miss anything? Did I miss anything? Did I miss anything? Guys, uh, okay. Think. So, the newsletters, uh, shout out to Onome and Gracious behind the scenes. They've been doing really, really wonderful, awesome jobs. And of course, Bolu, Bolu is around, he's alive. Don't worry, you see him so. Court. He's around, he's alive. He's, he's dealing with the metaverse. Proof of life. Proof of life, don't worry, don't worry. So guys, see you next week. And we have lots and lots and lots of juicy content coming your way. So just watch out. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.